Reading Myanmar, Voicing Consonants. Now you may not be familiar with that term, voicing. But it's going to be important because it's going to actually shift the sound that many consonants in Burmese make. You may have already learned the sounds of all the consonants, but now you have to learn how to shift those sounds and the rules for when you do that. So let's first define what voicing means. Now many consonant sounds come in pairs. For example, in the English language, the sounds for the letters P and B are produced in the same place in the mouth. Why don't you try it? Now, don't say the letter, just say the sound that it makes. Pa, ba. The P makes a harder sound while the B resonates in the vocal cords. What do we, what do we mean when we say that? It resonates in the vocal cords. Well, if you hold your hand on the front of your throat while you make those two sounds, you will hear or you will feel that the B actually vibrates more. Your vocal cords are vibrating more when you make that sound. So let's look at some examples in the English language of how that happens. Here's some letters, one letter combination. But now let's look at how voicing works. And we're going to stop using that term voicing. We're just going to say it softens the sound. That's a little bit easier to understand. So let's look at the first letter. It's a K. But it is softened to the sound of a G. So that's a pair. And that's how you soften a K sound. An F sound is softened to a V. S is softened to Z, T to D, C, H to J, and P to B. So look at those examples. Just try saying some of them. So if you go from left to right, it's ka becomes ga. Fa becomes va. Sa becomes za. Ta becomes da. Cha becomes ja. Pa becomes ba. Now, you may notice that those are exactly some of the sounds that your letters make in Burmese. So, really, this is the simplest way to describe what happens. The consonant sound is softened. So, let's look at some of the examples using Burmese consonants. We'll just go through a number of these. So, this consonant you learn makes the ka sound, but Many times it's softened to a ga sound. Even an aspirated k, ka, is softened to a, the same g sound, ga. The cha sound is softened to a ja. The sa sound is softened to a za. Again, the aspirated form, sa, is aspirated to a za. This Ta is softened to a da. The aspirated ta is softened to a da. The pa, remember, to a ba. Even the aspirated pa is softened to a ba. And lastly, the tha is separated or is softened to a da. That's probably the hardest one for me to hear the difference in as I listen to the language app. But I think you begin to see how the sound of consonants are softened. So one of the most common examples of voicing or softening the sound occurs when using this verb particle. This is the present tense particle. So the first word is the word for to go. Now here is the consonant that we're going to be looking at. Now we've learned that that's pronounced with the T sound. So we see it over on the right in the example here using a T. Thwa te. However, that T needs to be softened to a D. Thwa de. Almost always when you see this verb particle used, it's going to be softened to a D sound. Let's look at the second word. 
This is the word to live. Again, you would think it would be pronounced nete, but it's not. That T has to be softened to a D. Nede. So how in the world do you decide when to soften the sound of a consonant? Well, we're going to talk about three specific rules to apply. As a general rule, every syllable in each phrase is softened, except the first syllable. Now, this is not a hard, fast rule, but this will get you through about 70 to 80 percent of your pronunciation of consonants. Let's give you an example. It comes from the language app. It's the word for only begotten son under the heading Jesus Christ. And I've put all the consonants in this phrase in the yellow. Let's look at each one. Here's our first consonant. Now we know that that would normally make a T sound. And it does in this phrase because it is the first syllable in this first phrase. Now the second consonant that appears would normally make a P sound, but because it's not the first syllable, it's not the first consonant in this phrase, it has to be softened. Now do you remember what you soften a P to? That's right, it goes to a B sound. Let's look at the next consonant. It's the same as the first consonant, and that we pronounced with a T sound. But because it is not the first syllable in this phrase, it has to be softened to a D sound. This is the last consonant in this phrase. It would normally be pronounced with a TH sound. Now do you remember what that has to be softened to? That's right, it's a DH sound. And in this first phrase, now we're using the word phrase for all the letters that appear together before there's a space. So in our first phrase, every consonant that follows the first is softened. So we see this rule applies to that one. It also applies to the second phrase. So let's look at this next consonant. Now that has the TH sound. And because it is the first syllable in this phrase, the first consonant that appears, it is not softened, so it retains that TH sound. But now we have this consonant, and we recall that it has the T sound. But we don't use it in this phrase, in pronunciation, because it's not the first syllable in this phrase. So it has to be softened to a D. So that phrase is really a good demonstration of how the sounds of these consonants are softened. So listen to it on your language app. Only begotten Son under the heading Jesus Christ. Now wouldn't it be great if there were no exceptions to that rule of pronunciation? But as in all languages there's almost always exceptions to the rule. Now two of those exceptions we can define with a rule of its own. So the first rule of exception is if the syllable follows a glottal stop. Remember a glottal stop is a very abrupt ending uh, consonant vowel combination sound. If that happens then the very next consonant that follows does not get softened. So let's look at an example of that. Under the heading, The Causes of Suffering, this is the phrase for to care about someone. Now let's just look at the first two consonants here. This first one has a G sound. Now no matter where it appears in the phrase, it's always going to have a G sound. That sound is already softened. It can't be softened any further. The same is true for this consonant, which has the Y sound. There's no way to soften that sound. But now let's jump over to the fourth consonant in this phrase. Normally we would say this has a T sound. Now because it's not the first consonant or the first a syllable in this phrase, we might think that it needs to be softened to a D, but it does not. And the reason is this vowel combination precedes it. 
and that is a vowel combination that has a very abrupt clipped ending. Now I'll tell you the good news is that it's almost natural not to soften that next syllable because when you clip off the end of the syllable preceding it just seems more natural to give the next consonant a harder sound. So that's kind of some good news. Okay, let's look at the next rule of exception. Number two, when the consonant follows the letter a, ah, and remember most times you see that it's going to be pronounced a, uh, it's not softened. That's regardless of where it appears in the phrase. So you're often going to see it at the beginning of phrases, as you do in this one, under the heading describing emotions, qualities, and conduct, it's the word for good quality. But that letter A ah appears in two places in this phrase. We're going to focus on this consonant, which is the consonant that follows directly after the second A ah in this phrase. Now normally this would be pronounced with the TH sound. It's not the first syllable, it's not the first consonant, so you may think you need to soften it, but you don't. Why? Again, because it follows this consonant. And where something follows that consonant, it is almost never softened. Now beyond those rules of exception, there are going to be some other exceptions that you'll just have to learn by sight. Some words are exception to the rule and the first syllable is softened as well. So the first consonant that you see in a word may be softened. Here's an example of that. It's the word for table. It's from the section home and furniture. You might think that this first consonant has an S sound, and it normally does, but in this word it's softened to a Z sound. Likewise, the word for promise that comes from the plans and promises section on the language app this syllable normally has a K sound, but on this particular word, it's softened to a G. Here's one last exception that you're going to see occasionally. Sometimes a voiced or a consonant that has a soft sound can actually become the consonant that has a hard sound. In other words, it's working just opposite of what normally the softening does. Let's look at a very common word you're going to be using a lot. It is the word for God. You'll find it under the section entitled God on the language app. This consonant that it starts with normally has a B sound. It can't be softened any farther, but it actually works in just the opposite direction and becomes an aspirated P sound. Listen to it on the language app. So there are some words that in reality you're just going to have to learn by sight. But as we've said, using these rules and rules of exception, you're going to be able to correctly pronounce 70 to 80 percent, perhaps more, of the consonants in your reading.